Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Doing something a little bit different today. Uh, I guess you saw the thumbnail. There's no Mech 600 blocking our view today because I have a drill press for roll crimping and we're gonna be roll crimping the thug slug. <laughs> Some of y'all may not be into slugs, uh, but I am. <laughs> Ever since I was a kid, my granddad used to have a an old 12 gauge single shot on, by the door, and it, he it had a uh, he called them pumpkin balls, and and I'm sure I'm pretty sure they were just normal Foster type slugs. Um, and he actually took a couple of deer with that out his front door, if you can believe that. I, I mean, I was knee high to a grasshopper back then, but anyway. Uh, 28 gauge slug, not real common. Uh, the thug slug from Ballistic Products. Uh, I've been trying to get them for a while. Uh, they're they're pretty uh, hard to get. I don't know, you know, what their supply is like. And 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 here's a thing: they they might actually come in quite often, and they just leave as fast as they get them. Like a lot of other stuff that's out there right now um it's in stock and and literally 30 minutes later it's gone so but anyway i was lucky enough to get a bag of these uh wanted to put them together just to see the way they acted um uh, i don't know if you guys have ever seen these uh but uh they they look a lot like the brinicky uh type slug uh the swags pretty hard uh, lead, so probably won't deform a whole lot. Um, anyway, I used a load. They have a, a load of the week. I may blurt this up on the, on the screen there. They actually have uh, one, two, three, four different uh, loads for the thug slug. Um, and it's a good thing they came out with this because I have uh, the slug manual thinking that there was going to be information about the thug slug in there. But that gummit BPI put thug slug info in the slug manual. <laughs> I, I spent the money and, and all I got the info on was uh, the little slug carrier that's in there, which I mean, I guess it's good info. But, you know, the, the thug slug has been around for a while. So uh, the one I'm using uh, is with long shot, just because I have that powder. They do have a version with 572. From what I'm gathering, 572 is available. Uh, you can get your hands on it, but I don't have any. Uh, I don't see another need to get it for any other reason. I'm not gonna buy it for a thug slug. Um, Universal, they've got two loads with Universal. Um, out of all of these, um, the long shot load that I'm loading up had the highest velocity. Uh, it also had the highest pressure from what they're saying. Uh, I did run this through the, um, pressure trace too. And, and this are the results from that. So velocity, uh, I shot a five shot string and that muzzle I was showing 1434 feet per second, which is a little bit lower than what they're showing. They're saying that it's gonna be around 1488. Um, and also the pressure, uh, I showed it a good bit lower than what they're showing. Uh, I'm finding out that a lot of the load of the week stuff that, that I've been doing, uh, uh, if you watch the, the three inch versus two, two and three quarter inch steel video, that was a load of the week load. And it came in a lot lower pressure on my pressure trace than what they're publishing. They're maybe just playing it safe, I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, I may blurt this up here so you can take a look at that. Now, the only real thing that I have to compare this to is just because it looks like it is that Brennicky, uh 28 gauge slug. Uh, I know that uh, Buffalo did a couple of videos 
on on that slogan. And there could be more out there. I don't know. I'm, I just you know a quick search. They come up on his. So he he did some shooting uh, with that. If you want to go check his video out, you can. But that's where I'm getting some of the info as far as like how much the Brennicky weighs uh, versus this. A little bit of difference, not a ton, but a little bit of difference. Um, and then also, uh, I got some info from the Brennicky site for ballistic coefficient and stuff like that, just so we can put together some uh, some numbers, right? Now, as far as numbers goes. At 1,434 feet per second at the muzzle, this thing is going to have about 1,333 foot-pounds of energy. Um, and I've got a little dope chart. I may blurt this up on the screen, too. Uh, at 25 yards, the velocity drops down to 1222, 969 foot-pounds of energy. At 50 yards, you're down to 750 foot-pounds of energy. At uh, 75 yards, you're at 623. This was sighted in, assuming at 87 yards. Uh, at 50 yards, you're 1.8 inches high. At 75 yards, you're 1.1. At 100 yards, you're 1.8 low, right? Now, what can we take with these slugs? What can we do with these slugs? Um, I guess you can do whatever you want. <laughs> um, Hogs, coyote, deer, I guess if it's legal in your state to shoot a, a slug smaller than a 20 gauge, uh, you, could, you, could, you could kill deer with this, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, 292 grains of lead hitting a deer in the chest at close range is probably going to do the job. Um, but don't want to get too far into that. What I want to do is bring you around here, uh, show you how we put these together. It's very simple. Uh, we'll be doing some roll crimping. I've never done that on the channel here. I don't do a lot of roll crimping. I hate roll crimping, by the way. Uh, and the reason is I have not found a way um, to get the holes to where I can reuse them again. And when you're talking 28 gauge, especially 410s, man, roll crimping is just not uh, real, real happy with me. Now, what I will tell you is you can fold crimp these. You can fold crimp slugs. I've got some slugs that I fold crimp. Matter of fact, VPI has 410 slugs right in their manual, and it says fold crimp. So just because it's a slug does not mean it has to be rolled. Uh, I think that's just a, a way a lot of, uh, I think sometimes it's just done to determine that, hey, by the way, this is a slug. <laughs> when you see that chunk of lead through the top of the slug, you know it's, or the shell, you know it's a slug, which I would be more comfortable with that too. But I also have some slugs that I do have to roll crimp uh, just because of the stack height and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, uh, let me get you around here on, on this side of the bench. Uh, we'll put these things together. And then also, I went to the farm, did a little shooting. I think I got some footage of me shooting. I've got a target. I shot a five-shot string. We'll take a look at that. Uh, and then maybe some final thoughts on, 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 on slugs and the thug slug. Uh, so... Come on around. All right. Okay, so let me let me first start off by saying YouTube, uh, they've gotten to where, and I don't know how recent this has happened, but but it's it's happened to me uh, while uploading videos. They get kicked back because I am showing people how to manufacture ammunition. And, and, and I guess from what I can gather, because I don't get a ton of information and hopefully, you know, this goes through is they don't want people to show the complete process of loading ammunition or making ammunition, right? So what I have found out is if I leave some steps out, then we are more than likely good to go. So what I will tell you is I have primed and powder charged hulls right here. Okay. Um, I've already loaded a couple right here. You go. 
See the little thug slugs? This one's not that great. And by the way, this is something too that, that a lot of people say, man, you can't, you can't roll crimp, uh, you know, hulls that were crimped already. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, these are once fired Cheddite hulls. Um, I'm gonna roll crimp them. These are once fired Cheddite hulls. I roll crimped them. <laughs> but I will tell you this, this is a new Fiocchi hull that was roll crimped. So from the, uh, uh, an appearance point of view, yeah, I'd say the Fiocchi <laughs> looks a little bit better. Uh, it may even, you know, I would say it probably would retain better pressure or more consistent pressure. And heck, it may even be more accurate as a slug. I don't know. I, I'd have to, uh, and I might do that. I may load up maybe five of these, load up five of these and see what happens. Um, so anyway, uh, where were we? All right, so, so this is what you get. You get a bag of, of thug slugs. There's 25 of them in a bag. Now, I hope the camera can see this. So, so let's look at what we've got here as far as weight. So this thing is, is similar to the Brunecki slug, except, you know, this doesn't crush up into like the Brunecki's. You have a crush section right here that, that is going to crush. Now it does come apart, right? So that slides up in there. So this is one of the reasons why I'm not real fond. I mean, this is very similar to a foster type slug, but you see how, how deep that is. I mean, and how thin the outside wall is. So there's only a very small amount of solid lead. And, and you know, we know this because this by itself is 262 grains. I don't know if you guys can, can see that. Well, I understand I can't move that scale and it'll change, but 262. Now, if I put the base wad in there, you know, the way it actually goes together, now we're at 292. Now, earlier I, I referenced back to, to Buffalo Outdoors and he did a video on the Brunecki slugs. And again, they look super similar to this, but I think um, when he took the, the Brunecki apart, it was in the 240 range. And then when he put it all together, it was like 272. So this whole thing is weighing about 20 grains more, right? So that's why ballistically it's gonna hit a little harder. Um, than the Brunecki if you're pushing at the same speed, right? Now, so that's the weight of this thing. Now, in, in the hauls, the way that the uh, load is put together, let me pull my sheet over here. So we see right here, we've got to do a uh, long shot, uh, a nitro card 28 over the powder, and under the slug. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to raise the slug up into the shell column, which is commonly done even in you know normal shot. So here's our nitro cards right here, big old bag of these. And um, so we pull one out. All right, let me give you a quick tip on these too. Sometimes people fight with these. So when you put this thing in there and put it in sideways, but take you something that's that's flat and round. You can use, I, I'm using a screwdriver, you know, to push down. You could even use a 410 hull. Anything that fits inside of that, what you want is you want this to push it, get in the center and just push it straight down. And it, it, won't, it won't rotate inside that hull. Because you get it down there and rotated, you'll end up tearing the card up and it's just a big pain in the butt. So now, this is how simple it is. You just take this, this thug slug and you just drop him in. And I just use the back of this screwdriver and push it in there like that. Right? So there you go. Now, we've got it together. I'm gonna go ahead and put another one together Right. And then we'll go over to the to the roll crimper. 
But yeah, so just get your get your card down there to the bottom. Get you a thug slug out. And then just slide them in there and push them down. Now, what I'm gonna do is, is I've got my, my drill press right here. I'm going to reload that, relocate the camera to where we can see what's going on here. And um, we'll row crimp some of these babies. All right. Hope y'all can see this. Um, I don't have the best lighting in the world, matter of fact. Let me, let me get this a little bit better light right here. All right, so drill press. I have this. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight. I, I don't even think it came from there. This thing's old. But this is what I used to roll crimp. Now, let me give you a quick tip on roll crimping, at least for me. Um, I have just an old 28-gauge uh, hole here. It's been shot. Uh, I use it to heat up my crimper. I've got the belt set up on the lowest speed. Uh, I'm not sure, I think it's about 700 RPM. It's probably a little fast. I think if you could get it down slower, you'd probably even get a better result, but it's not terribly bad. I mean, you can see on the practice crimp here. This is a precision uh, crimp die. Uh, everybody has their preferences. Um, I like the precision. I've tried the BPIs in the past. Didn't really care for it. Uh, but anyway, so this is a precision roll crimper. Now, I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to burn this down a few times. And here's something else. Because of the way roll crimping goes, it's not like loading a normal haul where you would, um, you know, drop your shot, put it in pre-crimp and crimp and go to the next one. You want the heat to stay in this thing. So basically get all of your slugs together that you're gonna be roll crimping and then do them all in one shot. Uh, you, you end up obviously getting a, a feel one after another, one after another. Uh, it, it goes a little bit smoother, you get better crimps and you get a feel for when to stop. I don't have any kind of stop set on, on, on my, my press. Um, some people do, some people don't. But you can feel it when it bottoms out, okay? So I'm gonna turn this on. Uh, maybe on editing I can cut the volume down because this thing is loud but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn in some heat with this and then we'll go to crimping shells That was pretty down and dirty uh, and fast. But yeah, so there's the two I did. I mean, they're not terribly bad. They're crimped, they'll shoot. They're all the way down. But again, this is the, the new Fiocchi hole that I had right here. Okay, I don't know if you guys saw those. But anyway, these are the, the five that I've already done. And they shoot just fine. Trust me, the ones I shot at the farm look just like that. Okay, um, I just hate wasting new holes on a, on a slug that I'm gonna <laughs> target practice with, right? Now, uh, let's see if there's anything else while we're over here on the press. I don't think there is. Um, that's pretty much it. One thing that I don't do that you probably could do is put a little bit of, some people use a little bit of lube, a little bit of oil or something on there. Uh, it may, make a huge difference. I don't know. I, I just never have used it. Another thing too, you don't see me using a shell holder on here. This thing is flat. I actually let that shell spin a little bit in my hand, you know, um, to center it up. I, it's just all about feel. You know, everybody's got their preferences. You don't necessarily have to have a, a shell holder to do roll crimping. Matter of fact, 
I know some people that are good enough and brave enough, they use a drill press. Not a drill press, a hand drill, and just drill them in. But uh, anyway, let's go out to the farm, take a look at these, and then uh, we'll be back. Take a look at the uh, target. BPI thug slug, 25 yards. All right, what y'all think about that? That was pretty pretty wild, huh? It's quick, but anyway, I, I kind of got a backer set up here um, where we can take a look at this up close. So let me get the camera up here in tight, and then let's take a look close up look at these and see what they actually look like. Uh, I'm gonna go from there. All right, so let's take a look at this a little bit closer. One thing that, that you'll notice is a little bit high and to the left, I think, um, I think Buffalo in his videos maybe was in the kind of the same area. Obviously his groups were probably a little tighter than mine. I'm not that great of a shot. But what you'll notice is there's a you can actually see the striations of uh the slug. And you know, you can see uh right here on the, on the tips where they are actually going right in there, right? So we're not squeezing it down, uh, you know, to where those are gone because obviously we can we can see them. One thing that you will see is there's a little yaw, and and and, and Buffalo got this too, where this thing is not hitting perfectly straight. It's got this one had a little bit of yaw right here. There's a tear in this paper right here. Okay, this one big time tear right here. So it looks like that wad was crushed up. You know, it, it, the wad crushed up and it hit a little bit sideways, which means it's not flying perfectly straight. And the further down range, the more it may correct itself. Uh, these, this wad is almost acting like a, a, a stabilizer, if nothing else. Uh, if you could imagine a shuttlecock, the weight, by design, the weight is right here. Well, of course, there's weight here too, but there's probably more right in the tip. But this, is stabilizing it as it goes down. And I think on Tail Flatermouse YouTube channel, I think they did show a video where these little striations are or will impart a little bit of spin on, on, a, on a slug in a smooth bore barrel, which, you know, I don't know of a 28 gauge that has a rifle barrel. Um, it doesn't mean there isn't one. I just don't know of one. So, uh, and they are at an angle. I don't know if you can see that, but they are at a slight angle right there. So, you know, it would impart a little bit of spin and actually would it be left, right? But anyway, as far as group size, <laughs> I hate to even measure group size, but you know, from there to there is about four and a half inches, maybe a little bit less. Maybe a little more, actually just a little bit more if you go center to center. Um, you know, if you take the flyer out, maybe two and a half, something like that. But uh, not terribly bad with, with a big, large front bead <laughs> for a sight. That's it at 25 yards. So pretty much the only thing, you know, those are the things I wanted to go over as far as the, the close-up on the target is there is a little bit of y'all, which I'm sure would affect maybe penetration, that kind of stuff. Um, but other than that, it looks pretty good. looks pretty good. So let's get you back around the front bench and, and let's get some final thoughts on the thug slug and, and, and some, some, uh, sneak peeks at what's coming up. So what y'all think about the thug slug? <laughs> it, it, this may not be up any of y'all's alley at all. <laughs> and if you don't watch, that's fine. I get it. Uh, but man, I, I, I like messing with the slugs. I like messing with anything, uh, you know, sub gauge 28, 410. 
Um, how does it do? I mean, I, I guess um, it does okay. <laughs> it probably, it probably, I mean, I'm sure it, it, it's right there with the Brenecki, uh, you know, ballistically. Actually, it's probably got a little bit more energy because it's heavier. Uh, from from my shooting with, uh, I was shooting a Benelli Super Black Eagle three, uh, 28 gauge, chambered in three inch. These are two and three quarter inch shells, um, and um, just the rib and the bead. And if y'all ever seen the bead on those guns, they're huge. <laughs> they're big. <laughs> it's not like a little tiny brass bead, which would probably would have helped. Um, so. That's about as good as I could get off of a rest. Uh, the triggers on those guns aren't like, you know, two and a half pound triggers. So uh, I'm sure you could, if you had a dedicated gun that, uh, you know, one of the tri-stars that you could put a trigger group in that's really crisp and lightens up those triggers, uh, you might could come up with a pretty accurate uh, piece. Uh, actually, even, uh, you know, I think uh, I know that the TriStars and maybe some of the other guns, they come with like a rail, uh, a, a groove built in for that you can attach an optic to, uh, which would be neat. Uh, I, I have uh, one of my pointers. I've actually went out and bought a, uh, a, a, a Weaver rail that I think I made tap and, and drill and tap the, my receiver just so I can put an optic on it just to see how good I can get with, uh, well, the thug slugs, but also I, I've got some other slugs that uh, are proving to be a bit more accurate and they're a bit heavier and they, so they're going to be a more uh, power down range. Now let's talk about that power down range on the thug slug. So the data that, that BPI is giving us I'll be honest with you, it's a little anemic for me. I think that a 5 8 ounce projectile could could be moving much faster out of this, uh, out of a, a two and three quarter inch 12 gauge. And when I say much faster, I'm talking 1600 to 1700 feet per second. Um, am I gonna spend the time on the thug slug to, to make that happen? Probably not, but as a loader, you might want to do that. You know, because you know what, you when, when these are around, you can get them. You can get them in twenty. They come in twenty-five packs. So if you're able to to get, say, uh, you know, four packs, that's a hundred of them. So you could definitely, uh, you would have a lot to work with to work up a load. You know, uh, if you, you you build five, say you took uh, five strings to to put together a load that you think is going to be good. So that's one bag. Uh, then, then you send off a string of, of six or ten to precision uh, to get tested. If it didn't work out, then you could put another ten together uh, and then send that in uh, and, and see how that works. Once you got it good, then you could actually refine it below maybe what your max was or if you're shooting for a certain velocity or whatever. Uh, so a hundred should get you where you need to go. And then you can just load up 25 of them and hunt, uh, or whatever you want to do with them for, uh, you know, the next year, uh, or whatever, you know, that's kind of my process. I don't want to be thinking for nobody, but that's kind of how I would do it if I'm working to get putting together loads. Uh, anyway, uh, what could you do with them? I mean, you could kill foxes. I'm sure you could kill a hog with it. Uh, I'd say these things will take uh, a whitetail out to 40, probably 50 yards if you can hit it, you know. Um, and I think, you know, that's going to be our limiting factor with smoothbore is, is accuracy. I really don't know how accurate they can be. Um, someone, you know, that's very proficient in shooting, uh, you know, rifle type shots like Buffalo or, or uh, Officer Greg or whoever, then they're going to do a whole lot better job than I can at it. Uh, now, I, I don't know a, a whole lot more. Um, 
that we can talk about uh, as far as the thug slug. I think it can go a lot faster. Um, the long shot is a good data point. I think uh, Little Gun would be a good powder. I even think, um, you know, if you really wanted to get this thing rocking and rolling, you could even maybe do some, well, I don't want to get into too much about that kind of stuff uh, because I don't want to get in trouble. By the way, even though this is all listed, load at your own risk. <laughs> don't, that's, that, you know, I, I'm not saying this is gospel or whatever. So, you know, just be careful when you put this stuff together. Um, now, surprise, uh, I won't say surprise, sneak peek. Uh, because we're kind of out of bird season, and, and look, I'm not done with, with, with uh, the non-toxic stuff or the lead stuff. I'll be doing that all year. Trust me, I've got about six or seven videos that I just need to literally piece together. And that's probably the most timely part about all this is piecing all this stuff together. I don't know if y'all realize how much time this takes. Um, so, uh, but here's here's a sneak peek. So this is the, the, the Thug Slug 28 gauge. That's what we just looked at. Pre pretty neat. I don't know. There might be 30 of y'all that actually even are interested in that. But hang on. I think just by looking at viewership on, on the stuff that I do, I have a bag of... 410 thug slugs uh this is one of the videos that i need to work on putting together because i've already shot these matter of fact i shot them on the same day but look at that little puppy <laughs> right but look it's a 410 slug i don't know of, of a whole lot of slugs that are available that you can put together and 410 anything right now is hard to get a hold of i probably should just be dedicating everything i do to 410 because it's probably what people want to see now so we have 410 thug slugs. That'll be interesting. Um, let me show you this. Some of y'all may, mouth may just drop wide open. Some people have already seen this. This is a 28 gauge, three quarter ounce. Yes, three quarter ounce. And when I say three quarter ounce, I'm gonna weigh it here real quick. 326 grains, right? Much, much more than the thug slug or the Brennicky slugs. Um, it has a screw in the center of it. Now, I don't know if you can see that. I hope y'all can see that screw, right? With a base wad that flies just like this. Let me tell you something. This is coming up. Boy, howdy. I'm not a good shot. But this thing makes me look good. Now, you want to make the 28 gauge a thumper? How about a 7 8 ounce? Right? Let me put this. How about a 7 8 ounce chunk of lead? A paradox type slug. And when I say 7 8 ounce, I'm talking 389 grains. It's actually a little bit more than seven eighths ounce. And by the way, I have tested data <laughs> for both of those two slugs. This one is moving at 1600 feet per second. This one is moving over that. <laughs> so stay tuned, stay tuned. Now for my 410 fans, if the thug slug wasn't big enough for you, check this out. I have a hundred and let me let me weigh these for you. I have a hundred and fifty and a hundred and thirty one grain foster type slugs, right? And I think you know you can I think people offer these up for sale. They're just kind of tough to find. Um, but anyway, they're foster type, hollow type slugs. Uh, so you know accuracy is not the best in the world. They're not terrible. I mean, they're just like any other foster type slug. But how would you like to have a half ounce? I'm talking a 218, 219 grain 410 slug. Can you see that? That is 
a half ounce, let's see exactly what it weighs. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 230 grains with the wad. How about that moving at about 1,500 feet per second, right? Now the 410 has turned into something a little different <laughs> because most of your 410 slugs are, what are they, a quarter ounce or something like that? I mean, it's just very minimal. So if you're a slug fan, hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell that says, oh, by the way, Bullet just uploaded a new video because one of them is probably going to be on some of this kind of stuff. And at this point, uh, what I've been doing is um, basically shooting at targets. I haven't done any shooting through wood. I haven't done any ballistics gel. I just don't have that stuff. Uh, I, I mean, you know, I can get it. Uh, but I, I might can maybe shoot through some pine boards or something like that to show penetration, how it stays together. Uh, maybe some water jugs. I don't know. Y'all tell me, what should I shoot these through to kind of simulate what you would be interested in? Because obviously all of this stuff would be good for home defense, uh, for uh, hunting, heck, even target shooting, you know. Uh, so... I'm having fun with the slugs, a lot more fun than I am with uh, bismuth. <laughs> bismuth is still driving me crazy. Um, don't want to get into that, holy moly. But anyway, um, that's about it. Keep an eye out for those videos. They'll trickle out. I, you know, They're all not going to come out next week, that's for dang sure. But they are coming out. Um, hit the subscribe button. Like, leave a comment. That's a big thing too. Leave a comment. And I am finalizing the giveaway stuff. I know I've been mentioning this for probably a couple of months, but I finally have everything in that I thought, you know, this would be stuff that people would be interested in. So I'll probably come out with that. That might be the next video I do is, is giveaway notice. But uh, anyway, thank y'all for watching. Hope you liked it. Uh, I'll see you next time.